Gracias, mi amén. Can you hear the guitar? Can you hear the music? I your guitar class and I'm loving it. stream at 3 a.m. <laughs> Yeah, you know what happens when usually like, I'm like, okay, I got I just finished recording a bunch of stuff and like my fingers are all warmed up and then I was like, all right, it's getting late, I should go to bed, but you're like procrastinating and you're just jamming and I was like, ah, I might as well go live for a bit. For about two months, uh, do you ever have the desire to buy a new guitar? Yeah, every single day. Every time I'm on Instagram and I see someone play guitar. Same thing, I'm using the uh, Pini plugin right now. That's the tone you're hearing. I think most of my videos I'm using that, that tone. I'm using that one. Um, I have the Matea Sasato plugin. I don't think I've recorded anything, any of videos using that yet, but that one's pretty cool. Not very good for heavy tones like this. It's just such like a it's like a full tone. This side is nicer for like and like fun kids.
One thing when you guys are, um, I don't know how many guitar players are watching this right now, if you guys want to learn anything, but when you're bending a note, a lot of people add vibrato right away. Sometimes that works, but a lot of times you want to mimic a voice. And voice, if you listen to uh, professional singers, they'll sing, and when they hold a the note, they'll hold it for like a few seconds, and then they start moving it around. And it works the same way on guitar, it sounds really nice. Or even, not even just bending, just holding a note. Hold it for a few seconds before you start the uh, vibrato. What's up, Brazil? I just, that just has so much more feel to it compared to... Heavy rebuttal on every note. Twenty years, maybe twenty years now. to be me how to be me on the guitar um, learn all your pentatonic scales there's five pentatonic scales then learn all the seven modes Then learn how to connect those using chromatic notes all over the fretboard but just filling in the blanks so for example instead of just playing pentatonic like this just connect all the notes and then work on your phrasing. Phrasing is very important. I think phrasing is the one thing, which is what my next course is going to be on. It's going to be on phrasing. Is I think a lot of people um, neglect. There's not a lot of talk about phrasing. And phrasing is the difference between an amateur player and a professional sounding player. It has nothing to do with technique or note choices. You know, the same four players can play Mary Had a Little Lamb on the same frets. You know, and with the professional player, it'll just sound like Phrasing and feel go together as well. If your phrasing is good, I think that has to do a lot of it with feel, you know. I think feel is kind of like an airy term that people talk about. Like, oh, you don't have much feel or you're not playing that with feel. And I feel like students don't really know what that means. What does that mean? Play with more feel. I'm bending, I'm bending the note, you know. Like, where's the feel? And a lot of it has to do with the way you phrase things, I think. But, um, yeah, phrasing, you know, phrasing goes a long way. Every solo I write, every solo you've heard me play, I've spent hours like trying to figure out the proper phrasing, you know, of how to phrase the line that I want to play. If I was playing Mary Had a Little Lamb, do, do I want to slide into that first note? Or do I want to bend up to it? Or do I want to play it, actually hit the note? Or do I want to slide out, slide in from just one fret below? Which is gonna give you like a more fusion, fusiony, jazzy sound. Hello, Roy from Chicago. What's up, Chicago? You like Metallica? Yeah, I like some songs. You know, a lot of the hits, Sad But True, um, yeah, Mobile Life, you know, the basic hits. I just 
just learning the beat it solo. See, you're already way ahead of me. I can't play the beat it solo. Talk to us about the chromatic notes between the pentatonic notes. How do you do that? It's very simple. Look, so you have your pentatonic scale, right? Everybody knows the scale? Got a note here, a note here, a note here, a note here. All that space in between, you can use all those notes. I just call it filling in the blanks. Fill in the blanks between all these notes with the chromatic notes in between. Now, you can play, you can play every single note on the guitar, even if it's not in the key of instant, if it's not in your scale, as long as you don't land on it on a downbeat. As long as you don't hold it or land on it and you just use it as a passing tone, then you can use it. So the way I see my pentatonics, the way I see every single scale, instead of just this, I see it as. Just that. So now when I'm coming up with lines, instead of, you know, your basic. sounds great now I got stuff like does that make sense now there's certain lines that you're gonna hear in jazz that you can mimic as well for example there's something called an enclosure an enclosure technique is when you approach a note let's say I want to hit this note you approach it from a few notes above and then one note below. So the enclosure is, it's called enclosure because you have this note and you're approaching it from above and below. But when you do it with chromatics, it sounds really, really nice. So if I were to play a lick with that. I can do it here as well. There it is again. Start it again. Start it again. I hope that makes sense. And you can do this with any scale. So if I take the major scale, for example, instead of just playing the basic three note per string major scale notes, now I'm looking at it as. But one rule of thumb I like to do is if I have three notes that are spaced apart like this, I'm not really gonna insert chromatics anywhere because that's a lot more difficult. Maybe here. But in a space where I have four frets together, something like here, where I have four frets right next to each other, with let's say one missing note, then it's a lot easier to fill in the blanks there. Because it sits all together, four, four in a row. All right, <clears throat> can you play Attention by Charlie Puth? Uh, I'm not very familiar with that song. What age were you when you began playing guitar? I think I was 12. I think I was 12 years old. I got my first guitar when I was like three or four, but I, I never really played it. Um, I think I was 11 or 12, I started taking guitar lessons. First I got a rental, an electric guitar rental for 60 days, which I didn't know how to tune, so I would just tune it to a chord by ear and just kind of strum it with distortion and then we had to give that back to the store my dad bought me like a little classical which I still have at my parents house I gotta go grab that one day um, I used to take that guitar to, to school every day in high school so it's like completely beat up I used to play guitar every day when I was in high school um, okay where were we fantastic I've been practicing that filling in the blanks way of playing lately yeah it's fun you know you just got to get used to it it just it's about getting used to it and coming up with lines that sound musical because obviously sometimes you know it's not going to sound good but honestly just filling in the planks going down like sounds great as well yo roy i play electric guitar without using a pick my friends keep telling me to use a pick but i use my nails instead should i try with a pick i'm afraid i won't progress with my play style check out um mateo mancuso He's like the hottest thing right now. And he doesn't use a pick. He only uses his fingers. So no, you're completely fine. There's a lot of great electric guitar players that only use... You know what? Fingers sound a lot better. Well, I don't know about nails. You're using your nails. Maybe use your fingers instead. But fingers sound a lot better than a pick. You're going to get a lot more organic sound. I wish I could play fast. I can't, you know, 
I can't do the, the lines that are in my head with fingers. Sometimes I'll try, but um, that's why I use a pick. But I think fingers sound a lot better. Can you walk us through your signal chain? It's very simple. I'm just using a plug-in right now, but I'm plugging my guitar. It's plugged into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin, which is, I don't think there's any processing on that. And that's just going into Ableton Live. And I'm just writing the Pliny plugin right now. I was just in the middle of recording something. I thought I'd hop on and say hi. Where is Eddie Van Halen in your list of all time greats? People always have him kind of low on their list, in my opinion. I think it's very high. I think he's in the top three it, best guitar players in the world. He's like up there in like the top three, top two, top one. He's not my personal favorite. Um, I'm more, I was more inspired by other players growing up. Um, but as I got older, I realized how good of a player he was and how influential he was on literally every single player, um, and how all the songs are just incredible with all the guitar licks and everything, and how it's just, he's just wicked. So, yeah, he's definitely one of the top players in the world. I wouldn't have him low on the list at all. So was all that where you were just playing basically all based off the five pentatonic positions with filling that blanks basically? Yeah, see, there, a lot more goes into it than just that. Because if you were to really break down everything, then I was also playing some arpeggios. I was also playing some triads. I was also playing a few um, scale shapes. But if I were to kind of force myself to only use the five pentatonic positions and fill in the blanks, it would sound a little like this. <laughs> Okay, I missed where I was. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How do you... I don't remember where I was. How do you throw in hybrid picking? How, do you, how often do you throw in hybrid picking for runs? Been working on that at speed, but I mainly use it for drop two voicings right now. I need to work on it more. I don't really think about it. Sometimes I'll just kind of do it because I'm too lazy to bring my pick down to another area of the string, so I'll kind of use my fingers. Um, but I use it quite often. If you pay attention to my solos, you'll see I use it pretty often, but I, don't, I realize I don't have to. I could also do the same licks without it. If I'm playing clean, then I'll use it to get like a certain snap. You're not gonna hear it with distortion, but. But all the same licks that I play with hybrid picking, I can also do with picking, so I don't put too much emphasis on it. If anything, on a cleaner sound, I'll use it to phrase things a little bit more, in a more interesting way, I guess. Can you make a video on more pentatonic sequences for shredding, or ideas of how to make shredding licks ourselves? Yeah, yeah, that's a good video idea. I have a ton of, in my speed builder course, I have a ton of pentatonic sequences, but yeah. Just, you know, the whole thing with pentatonic sequences is just take any pattern, just take anything and repeat it. You know, if we were to take something like, the most basic one that I use all the time is just going down three strings and just repeating that on every note. I use that in every single one of my solos. I also use three notes instead of three strings. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, la 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 la, can you make a video? Okay, how can we understand modes the easy way? I don't know if this is an easy way, but here's the way I like to teach it. So, let's take the major scale, okay? Everybody knows the major scale. Okay, there's seven notes in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The scale shape that you learn is just those seven notes repeated an octave higher. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, because that's all the space I have. Now, all the modes are, is you're playing each one of those notes, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, of that major scale, starting on the top string. 
So you're gonna play a scale from this note, 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 from this note. All those scales are still using those same seven notes from your original major scale, but you're just playing it in a different position. So technically, if I were to stay in this exact same position and play the major scale starting on the second note, I'm now playing the second mode, Dorian. Now if I do the same scale starting on the third note without moving anything, now I'm playing the third mode. And if I do it from the fourth note, I get the fourth mode, which is Lydian. And so on and so forth. And I'm not changing anything, I'm just starting on a different note. Technically, if you know you were to play this for me and say, hey, what scale am I playing? I'd say you're just playing a major scale. But if you start on that note and end on a note, then technically you're playing one of the modes. But the way you want to learn it is you want to learn the different scale shapes of each one of the modes starting from their actual note with your first finger. So Dorian would be here, Phrygian would be here. And once you have all the shapes down, what you want to do is you want to practice it by going down the first mode, the major scale, then slide up to the last note of the second mode, which would be Dorian, and descend using that scale. And then move up a note, now you're in Phrygian, ascend up using that. Go down Meridian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and then you're going to end on Locurian. So you're just kind of going up and down, up and down through all the modes. But really the modes are just the seven notes of the major scale played all over the neck. So really you're just playing the major scale. You're learning the major scale starting from all seven degrees of that scale. That's all the modes are. But each mode has its own characteristic sound as well. And you can play chords, and that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Like if I were playing a Phrygian mode. It has a more like Middle Eastern type of sound, right? But on top, that really has to do with the chords that I'm playing. The chords are going to dictate the sound of the mode. To give you an example, I can play the chords that I just played and play just that major scale, starting from G, just an original major scale shape, and it'll sound like a Phrygian scale. It won't sound like the major scale. I hope that helps. Your technique is sharp as fuck. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Um... What is a major Dorian scale? I don't know. Who do you like to listen to now? In terms of guitar players? That's a great question. I don't really listen to, uh, I guess, a lot of guitar players that I could think of right now. In terms of like brand new guitar players, I like Nick Johnston's, um, not, his new, not his last two albums, I think the one before that, Remarkably Something, Human. A lot of really good melodies in that. Um, but I don't really, I used to listen to it more. I don't really listen, actively listen to that. I'm trying to find like more unique type of music now that I've been listening to. Um, what is your best guitar exercise and daily routine? It's this little exercise that I show in my Guitar Speed Builder course. And I use it to warm up my pinky, basically the relationship between my pinky and the other fingers, and then my ring finger and the other fingers, because those are my weakest fingers, especially if I'm not warmed up. And it's very simple, you just take any string, any fret area across four frets, and you're gonna go, if we number the fingers one, two, three, four, you're gonna go one, four, three, four, alternate picking. So one, four, three, four, one, four, three, four, one, four, three, four, one, four, three, four. And that's um, working your pinky and your ring. And if I move that down a fret, or you can do it in the same area, Instead of one, four, three, four, I'm gonna go one, four, one, four, two, four. So now I'm going one, four, two, four. I'm using the middle finger instead of the ring. So one area I'm using the ring and the pinky. And the other one, I'm gonna use the second finger and the pinky. And I can just move that around with the scales. I can go wider, I can go less, I can use it in different strings, but I love practicing this exercise um, just to get both of my hands in sync and also just to warm up and to stretch out my pinky and my ring finger. So if you play that a little quicker, it sounds like this.
Now, the other way you can do it is backwards. Instead of one, four, three, four, you can go one, two, one, three. No, wait. How'd it go? Yeah, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four, and then one, three, one, four, one, three, one, four. So that was how I did it. Huh? Wait a second. Okay, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four. That's one of my favorite exercises. Another thing is just running up and down scales. I also like the chromatic exercise, just playing the chromatic, um, the chromatic scale up and down. Or breaking it up into maybe two strings. And then three strings. Um, where were we? La la la, what is your best exercise? Hexatonic for the win, yeah. I've, a lot of the stuff I do is really based off the hexatonic. What time is your delay set at 900? I don't know, let's check. My delay is set at... Uh, 500 right now. Sir. As your subscriber for years, can you please play Trader by all of this Olivia Rodrigo? I would love to, but I don't know that song. Sorry. Do you think that we are getting more technical nowadays rather than more musical? I feel like peeps are losing musicality and emotion with all the technicality behind it. It's not a bad thing, but yeah. I feel like it's getting more rhythmic from what I noticed in the past like five, six, seven years of new guitar players coming out or the bigger guitar players. It's very rhythmic. Um, it's not as melodic as like, you know, the guys from the 80s and 90s and maybe early 2000s. So I do think we're kind of losing, I wouldn't say losing musicality, it's different, but you are losing melody. A lot of, you know, a lot of some of the bigger guitar players, if, you, if I played any of their songs to someone for the first time and asked them to hum back a melody, you wouldn't be able to. A lot of them, you know, there are no melodies or it's very rhythmic based, whereas if you played like one of, you know, Steve Vai or Satriani or Paul Gilbert's biggest songs, it's pretty easy to find that melody and sing it back. Um, there are a lot of players today that are also very melodic as well. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's cool that they're, you know, they're able to take the guitar to like new heights. Some of these guys are doing things that are absolutely insane that uh, you know, in the past, I've never seen anybody do. So it's cool that they were able to take it to a level that didn't exist a few years ago, which is really um, awesome to see. Um, and it's not to say that there aren't, you know, melodic guys. There are a lot of, you know, people doing some crazy techniques and being very melodic. Uh, la 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 la. Roy, do you instantly know the position of every note on the fretboard or is it not overly worth learning? I don't know. Let's see. Let's take the letter G. Uh, so, kind of. I don't know it like, I would say if there was like a speed test for that over 100, I would get like maybe an 80, 85. Um, I'm using references. I don't, I can't just go boom, what's it? Well, it would take me like a few, maybe like two seconds, which is pretty quick, but I, I don't know it instantly. And usually I'm using references. So this note right here, I know that this is D, so I know that's gonna be D flat. If we just take this random note, the way I'm gonna do it, I don't know what this is right off the bat. Well, now that I've looked at it for a few seconds, I know, but I'm gonna look at the A string and I know basically the, the, the two strings you should know where every note is 100% by looking at it right away is E and A because then you can just use the octave trick um, which is what I use to get a reference for all the other notes. So if I want to know what this note is, I just go down an octave. I know that this is an E flat on A so I know that note is going to be an E flat. Do you have perfect pitch relative? No, I don't have perfect pitch. I have relative pitch. 
but not perfect pitch. I saw your video on the saxophone solo on guitar, really sent me down a rabbit hole of learning. <laughs> Other instrument solos on guitar, really cool way to expand an idea. Yeah, you know, I was watching YouTube or Instagram reels. I don't know. I was watching some video and that song was in the background and I was like, oh, that's a really cool, you know, song. Obviously, everybody knows that. I wonder how it would sound on guitar. And I just spent like hours trying to like get the right phrasing and everything. This goes back to what I said at the beginning of this video. If you guys were watching about phrasing, a lot of that solo it, it was just me trying to figure out the phrasing, how to phrase that right. <laughs> to make it sound, maybe not like a saxophone, but to make it fit the track and still sound like epic and cool. Um, where am I gonna slide from? Am I gonna add little slides in between? Where am I gonna do a wah? There's also, I'm, I'm using my uh, wand there just on certain notes to emphasize certain things. What's your favorite Malmsteen song? I like Blitzkrieg, which I can't play, but goes like this. Something like that. Something like that. It's called Blitzkrieg, or I think in one of his videos he calls it Heavy E Phrygian. Something like that. That's one of my favorite songs. I like um, Black Star a little bit. Actually, maybe not. Um, he's got that one song um, with vocals at the beginning. This feels like paradise. We'll be in heaven. So that one's pretty cool. I like Rising Force. Um, Obviously, Far Beyond the Sun. Are you a fan of Brett Garcid? I haven't heard too much of his stuff. One of my guitar teachers used to like force me to listen to his stuff, so I'm kind of familiar with his stuff. But um, actually, now that I think about it, my entire, like all my chromatic notes, like filling in the blanks, I think I got that from a Brett Garza DVD, if I remember correctly. I think that's the first time I heard somebody say that, where to add the chromatic notes, you're just kind of filling in the blanks between the thing. And now I teach that all the time. Like my entire playing is based off of that. Aside from that, I don't really, like, I couldn't play you like a Brett Garson lick. Uh, if that makes sense. Play an Andy Madadean song, please. I don't know who that is. I love the short of you playing Rich Girl with the Arabic theme stuff. Very vibey and very melodic. Awesome. Yeah, that was really fun. That's from, um, so the Rich Girl is a, it's sampled from, uh, what's that movie? Fiddler on the Roof. That's the song. Uh, if I was a rich man. It's cool. You can add a lot of like really cool like Phrygian stuff in there to get that like Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern vibe. That was a really fun one to do. Please make a cover of Playing God, but in Roy's Ziv version. I don't know how to. I I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to play Playing God or any of their songs. But the problem is playing covers, especially like uploading them to YouTube. I usually play them my like the way I like to play covers, or I'll cover it like my way, which is not exactly like the way the song is written, and I'll add my own links to it. And some people like it, and some people get really annoyed, um, you know, and they'll be like, you ruined the song and all that. But I can't play a song as is. First of all, I don't have the patience to learn a song to play it like as is. And the whole, f like, the fun thing about playing a song, if 
for me at least, is to add my own licks in it. As long as I'm getting the melody in there, I want to take that melody and add my own kind of phrasing and stuff. Check out Crush by Polyphia if you haven't read it. I, used to, I liked some of uh, Polyphia's earlier stuff. Um, was very uh, I thought it was super like mel melodic. Not that their stuff isn't melodic now. I think it's still very melodic, but I just haven't heard a lot of it. Do you use an amp simulations? If so, what is your favorite in terms of sound and feel? I like the Nero DSP stuff. I think they're amazing. I used to use positive grid of our, a lot of stuff, but it sounds a little bit amateurish. I was able to make it work in all my videos with a lot of processing. My first album, I recorded using Positive Grid Spice Effects with like a million plugins on top of that to get it to sound fine. And now when I listen back to it, I was like, the, the guitar sounds so thin because I had to take out so many harsh frequencies to make it work. Um, the Neural, D stuff, Neural DSP stuff sounds great, but um, yeah. <laughs> Who do you consider a better guitarist, Michelangelo or Malmsteen? Malmsteen, 100%. Are you practiced with Frank Gombale? Yeah, I do. I practice using his Chop Builder. Chop Builder DVD, which I got when I was like in high school. Like, I know most of it by heart. You guys know the song?
Why vertical video? Um, this is supposed to come up in your like short speed. So I don't know if it did, but my camera which it was just set up to vertical. So I was like, oh, let's try doing vertical video. Plus YouTube just has a new, just had a new feature. Or if you go live with vertical, it should show up in the short speed. I don't know if that works or not, but. I was too lazy to switch the camera on the other side. Hotel California. I can't play that because if I play that, I'll get copyright strike on my channel. Hotel California? Fine. Hopefully they don't. Courses include everything from beginner to Roy level. Uh, I don't really have any beginner courses. How many of you are beginner guitar players? How many of you would be interested in a beginner guitar chorus? If it goes like, put your finger here, and this is the E string, and this is the B string, and here's the E chord. I don't know if I have the patience to. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, they have. I talked to you. They might have something in the works very, very soon. We might be doing. We might do like a limited run of this guitar, like a signature type. Of, not really a signature. It wouldn't necessarily be a signature, but it would be like a limited run of this exact model, which doesn't exist. Last time they made this was in 2005. So this is like a limited edition color limited edition specs that they haven't made since then. So basically we would do a limited run of maybe like 10 of these and then we would see if anybody bought it. And if people did, um, then we could take that conversation to the next level. <laughs> Beginner by graduate in the park of the time. I started learning since I was 15, but it was on and off. Mainly learned major chords and then got into classical stuff. How would it be to pick up from there? Um, were you playing acoustic or electric?
Somebody asked for a national anthem, but mad bluesy. Which national anthem? Canada or America? How do you approach melodic shred? What scales do you use? For melodic shred? It's the same scales all the time. Pentatonic and all the major modes and then some chromatics in between. Hexatonic type of stuff. Um, it's less to do with the, the scales and more to do with just approaching things, approaching things in a melodic way, which has to do with hitting the chord tones. A lot of it is just based off the one, three, and five, sometimes the seven, which are chord tones. That's how chords are built, using the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of a major scale. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. So you get your chords and trying to focus on hitting those notes within your licks and everything as you're playing through the chord changes, that's what's gonna make you sound melodic. Can you tell us why this guitar is your number one? I don't know, it just, this guitar just has it. I don't know what it is. It could just be, you know, they just lucked out with this guitar. The neck feels great, okay? Um, the body is small. Everything's smaller about this compared to like a normal guitar. Although some people told me it's not. I don't know. It just feels a little bit smaller. It feels nice. I like the color. I like where everything sits. So I place my hand here. I like that the pickup switch is right here. On some guitars, it's like in different areas. And I'm so used to it because I play it all the time that I'll miss it. Like obviously when I'm playing, I'm constantly switching back and forth between the switch. Um, I like that the volume knob is right here so I can do little volume swells. Um, it just feels really, really nice. I like the color of it. Uh, it's mostly just the feel and the sound. Like the, this guitar sounds so great, plugged direct with no amp, no plug-in, no nothing. How many guitar players, I mean guitarists can do that? At least that I try. But for me, honestly, it just has to do with the feel. Every single person that's ever tried this guitar has said it's one of the greatest guitars I've ever played. famous players have you met? Uh, I met Jordan Rudez. I've met big guitar. I haven't met that many really, really, really famous guitar players. I've met like the next level down because we're all kind of buddies, but who else have I met? I don't know. I gotta look through my pictures. Um, do you hit the one, three, five, seven on the chords that was played or the key? No, 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 no. On the chords that were played. Let's take this song, for example. The song is called Angels by Robbie Williams. Okay, so the chords are E. Okay, he's going to hold this for a while. Then he's going to go to A. Okay, then he's going to go to B. So I'm going to focus on the one, three, five of those chords. So E. A, there's a three. B. Oh, what chord is this? Sharp minor? A. C sharp minor? So everything I just played sounded super musical or super melodic. I was mostly focusing on just the chord tones. Let's hear that again. E, that's just the one, the five, and the three. Slide up to the three, back to the one. Sorry, five, or sorry, the three, and then the one. So I have my pentatonic scale right here. I can hit any of these notes, but end on the one, three, or five of any of these, the chords from the back and track. There it is again.
Ahí. And, and back to that. That's what you want to focus on. The one, three, and five, know where it is, hear it, and then everything around it is just scales. That's all it is. if Malmsteen played Hotel California, you know? with a soulful melodic voodoo lick. Can you play a long version of it? I don't know what video you're talking about. Maybe your first Neo Disco? Which one is that? Is that the one that goes... Comfortably numb improv. Okay, let's try that. at half a million subscribers pretty cool right could you be able to play some covers with martin miller mateo macuso or some of those guys it'd be nice to see you in the band context it would be very cool and i would do it but that's up to them not me um <laughs> Five songs high guitar solo part three. You're right, I gotta do a part three. I didn't even think about that. Maybe soon. What dot do you use? I use Ableton. And do you think the archetype leading is worth it? 100%. All my, all my last videos, honestly, they should pay me for how much I talk about this damn plugin. Uh, but they don't. Um, yeah, the Pliny plugin is definitely worth it. It sounds great. What do you think regarding the Rough Star? I think it's cool. I think it looks great. I never got into it. I tried it a few times. Um, but I think that they're cool. They got these cool uh, mid rangey tones. But I wasn't really a fan overall of the feel and the look and the tone for me, personally. But I think they're great. They all started with the presets and then I tweaked them, so I don't know what presets I was first using, but no, everything's like fully tweaked. Like, I have a million versions of like this exact same tone for like certain songs.
my best lick. Um. Maybe that one. Oh, you know what? solo? How does that go? school or no maybe like 10 years ago I had to teach it to somebody yeah I haven't heard that song in a long time why do you not do long form YouTube videos that much do you not think that would help with the reach too it would be hard because a lot of my followers came from shorts. So if I were to do long form now, it would start off very slow. Eventually it would pick up um, because a lot of the times it's not the same audience for long form as it is for shorts. And a lot of my, my channel grew from the shorts, not from long form. But um, I am planning on doing more long form and like figuring it out, telling a few stories, teaching some stuff and just doing a, well, like a lot more long form videos. It also takes a lot longer to edit a long form than it is, well, the, the shorts also take a long time to uh, kind of put together, but there's a much higher reach. And at the time when I started shorts, YouTube was pushing out shorts. And I think they still push shorts a lot more than long form. So it was a lot easier to get more views on shorts than it is with long form, which is why I focused on that. But I will start with... Uh, probably more long form on YouTube so, because I am interested in doing that. What kind of content would you want to see? You want lessons, stories? On behalf of the shorts people, please do long form. Alright, there we go. Fasten, what's up man? Yes, I do need an accountant. 
If anybody here from, is from Canada and you want to learn how to invest, how to be, just how to get your Canadian finances together, follow Bassam Canadian Finance Pro. He also has a course as well. That's really good, but his channel is good. He taught me how to invest. Send regards to Latin American followers. Say hola. Hola. I hope one day you can play like you, bro. I hope you can play even better than me one day. Honestly, it'd be cool to see your process for building solos in long form. I found that having teachers explain the thought process behind building solos as they play through them helps me grab. Okay, so funny you say that because I recently had to record a solo for a client and um, I kept putting it off because I knew it was going to take me a while because it takes me a long time to write solos. And I was just thinking, um, how else can I make you know good use of that time? And I decided just turn on the camera and I was going to talk through everything I'm doing to come up with a solo. And the video is three and a half hours long. I'm going to try and edit it eventually. I can only release it once he releases a song, hopefully in like the next two months or something. But this is the first time I like sat down and talked my way through how I come up with a solo. And it was cool for me as well to see because I never, all these things are just in your head. And it was cool to see like why I do certain things and why I don't do certain things. And I think it's one of the most valuable videos that I'll ever put out. Um, so I'll put that on YouTube whenever um, I get to editing it. Hopefully it's not three hours by the time I'm done editing it. I'm going to take out a lot of stuff from it because a lot of it is just me, you know, trying the same like over and over and again, like messing up and then trying to find different things. So if I'm repeating stuff over and over again, I'll probably take that out. That's probably like half an hour right there of trying stuff. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people will get a lot of value in that. It's just, it, it's really cool, you know, to see the thought process behind it. Because I do, like a lot goes into writing a solo, at least for me. And you see how I like, like for, in one area I wrote this entire middle section. And I keep trying to like, I'm talking to the camera, trying to figure out how to like end it. And then eventually I scrapped it completely. After like a million takes and like talking through it for like an hour and like coming up with a part. We end up getting rid of it completely because it just doesn't work. And you see like my thought process on like realizing why it doesn't work and why it's like, you know, and why I thought it would work and stuff. It's, I don't know. It came out really, really cool. And yeah, it took three and a half hours to write this like one minute, less than one minute solo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do like an edited version and then the full like uncut version. more of the how I mix slash recorded the solo over a backing track videos like you did the one time and you showed the workflow in Ableton that was super helpful okay sure I'm gonna write that down that's a good idea I didn't think about doing more videos like that let's write that down what else do you guys want to see this is good good stuff <laughs> um How to make solos in Ableton. I've been stuck on guitar. I'd say I'm moderate to average. I keep ending up not knowing what to practice, but I'm not playing super smooth and tend to repeat the same thing in different keys. Any tips? Yeah, you know, you probably have a lot of like certain holes in your playing that you probably know of. Um, and I would say start with those and then expand on those. For example, do you know all five pentatonic scales? Right now when you're improvising, what are you using? Are you using just the first pentatonic shape? Are you using the fourth pentatonic shape? Or are you using all five? 
from what I realize is most students, 90, like 99% of students don't know all five pentatonic scales. And if they do, they know how to maybe practice it, practice going through it, but they don't know, but they're not using it because they just don't know the shapes. And they don't know the shapes because we all start learning the first pentatonic shapes because it's so easy to visualize. Then a lot of people use the fourth shape because it's also easy to visualize and kind of look similar to the first one. And then the other ones are all kind of weird, you know? There's not, like, they don't, the, their string shapes don't really repeat. They're not very symmetrical. Um, the bend, the areas where you can bend in the first pentatonic shape are usually at the end or at the end of every um, kind of string area. On some of the other shapes, you can't. So, you know, a student would learn one of the shapes and then they'd be bending all these notes like they thought it was in, like the first shape and they'd be hitting all these wrong notes. They'd be bending to a, a wrong notes, which is why a lot of people don't use any of the other shapes. But that's a huge game. Like you could play so much with just the pentatonic stuff if you expand it across the fretboard, which is what learning all five shapes does. <laughs> have a twin brother. Yeah, he's a producer. Actually, he's here right now. Check this out. at all mostly shapes a lot of shapes a lot of kind of finger muscle memory going to the kind of basic stuff that I'm always playing but I'm trying to think more in terms of melodies and just you know trying to make it as musical as possible if that makes sense I don't know any drum mirror licks. I used to, I learned one for a video I did for Positive Grid a while ago. I had to play like a John Mayer tone, right? and I learned one of his licks, and it was really cool, but I don't remember it. I don't remember it. Careless Whisper. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
than one pentatonic shapes more than the other yeah I use the first one I use the fourth one uh, actually as the fourth shape first shape fifth shape I like the third shape a lot third shape fourth shape second shape I use the least so first fourth Fifth, third, no, first, fourth, third, fifth, and then second. You ever work with alternate tunings for lead playing? No, I've never actually tried that. That could be cool though. I've never, I've never tried that. walk you through what everything I'm doing. So this is the melody. This is my pentatonic scale, the first shape. And I'm gonna go down this note because I'm following the chord progression. There's an angel short in the works? <laughs> yeah. I'm just messing around with it. I don't know if I'll put it up. It's basically just like the melody in the middle of the solo. It's not gonna be a skit or anything. So that's, so here's the pentatonic skit. Second shape. Mode. That's a lock in.
Okay, so E major. Four tones. Pentatonic. A. And then on a note from the B. E major. Pentatonic. And then on a note that comes from the B. Now we're just following the vocal melody. So right there, what chord was that? Um, B, then C sharp minor, A, back to E, then B, A. So in A, yeah. Okay, so A was a chord. Over A, I was hitting this note, bending to this note. In my pentatonic shape, I don't have that note, but that's where I mean follow the chord tone. So I can still use the pentatonic, but now insert this note in there over the A chord. It's going to sound like you're actually playing the changes instead of just noodling over the pentatonic over and over again, like everyone else. Brother's birthday, can you play a birthday solo for him? Sure. How are we gonna do it? How's your proficiency with the slide? Had to use one for recording recently after a long hiatus. I still both love and absolutely hate it. Or working through the differences. I think I can relate, yeah. I think I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's just annoying when I can't do what I want to do out of it. I'm very basic with it, you know, I'm just kind of following the notes and stuff. When I see someone that's very, like, very proficient with a slide, I get very jealous because it's doing all these just incredible, like, blues phrases in there that just fit really, really perfect. I also always hate the sound of my slide on my guitar. I don't know if I need like, a better slide or what, but it always just sounds like a piece of metal on the guitar.
slide. I didn't even know they made bone slides. That's pretty cool. Is there something that you still struggle or, or still practice because I can't find some flaws in your playing? I'm not good at tapping. That's the one thing I'm really, really bad at. And a lot of modern players are like incredible at tapping. They got, I, I don't have like a tapping link that goes like this across the fretboard. I feel like almost every guitar player has one, especially today. Um, but go back and listen to any solo I've ever put out and you'll barely ever see me do like anything tapping, aside from like basic tapping stuff or like, or like tapping two scales. I don't have any like, or maybe tapping like arpeggio. Stuff like that, I don't have like crazy tapping legs. So that's one thing I still struggle with. You wanna say something about that? I noticed that you hardly use sweeping in your works. I don't know, I feel like I use sweeping all the time. Like that's one of my most Shapes. I feel like I use that in almost every video. Like that right there is like a little mini sweep. Straits money for nothing is inspired by banjo picking style. I've never noticed that. These Dava picks. I've been using these picks for probably over ten years now. Longer, longer than that. How many people watching this right now are not guitar players? Do all of you play guitar? Is there anyone here that doesn't play guitar? I'm <laughs> 
Do you still copy and practice riffs or have you stopped and just creating? I never really, I was never impatient enough to learn people's like licks exactly, but once in a while, the last thing I learned was like a Stevie Ray Vaughan licks a few years ago, like five or six years ago, and I've been using that in literally every single one of my solos. It's this one. And he goes. That, that part. That. I never used to play that before like 2017 maybe. Uh, maybe, yeah, 2017. But if I hear anything like interesting, I'll try and learn it. The, it's hard to remember because I'll always kind of fall back to my own licks, which is um, annoying. This is why all my solos sound exactly the same. But. <laughs> Five years out of hopeless. You gotta know what to practice. Is it possible to play all kinds of solos in one pentatonic shape? I don't know. Let's try it. Let's put that track on again and I'll try to solo just using one pentatonic shape. Actually, I don't think I'll be able to. I think muscle memory, like, I'll start using other notes, but. You're limited with certain notes. So I can't just play the pentatonic on its own. First thing we're gonna do is add the blues note. It's so simple, might as well add it. So that's a blues note right there. On its own sounds awful, but that sounds nice. Okay, so everything I'll do will be only on this shape, which is really difficult. Like, yeah, you can, but you're very limited because you can't hit the chord tones of the chords that are, are moving. For example, A has this note, and I want to hit that note, but it's on the so I'm not going to hit it. So you're kind of losing out on the melody. But it still sounds fine. All right, it's like... I feel like I'm like chained. Honestly, no. My answer is no. It sucks. It sucks. Just sticking to the pentatonic, the first shape, no. It's not fun at all because I need to hit this note. That's why I teach the hexatonic. If you're gonna choose one scale to work off of, just stick to the hexatonic. I'm gonna do the exact same thing actually, the same experiment. Okay, so you heard how kind of boring and annoying the pentatonic was because I couldn't hit any of the chord tones. Let's do the hexatonic. Hexatonic is exactly the same pentatonic shape, but I'm gonna add one extra note. I'm gonna add that note right here. Let's see if that makes a difference.
So even with the hexatonic, it's a bit better, but sticking to just one shape still sucks. Honestly, we, there we go. We got to it, we got to it on this live. If you're just playing with just the pentatonic shape and the first one and nothing else, no, you're missing out on so many chord tones. Here's the difference. Watch what happens when I play that same thing, pentatonic, but I'm gonna add the chord tones now. Same shape. Already so much better. But even that sucks because you're limited to this one position. Listen to the difference, okay, when you open it up to more positions, okay? Let's introduce the entire neck. Enough with playing just, just one shape. You're so limited. I didn't realize how limited you are. But you can do so much more when you start using all the shapes. Even if I just stick to pentatonic, but use the other shapes. Already that opens up so much. You know? Anyways, that's, that's why it's so important to just learn all the shapes. If we went back and just, and you asked me again, improvise using just the pentatonic notes, but use all five shapes, that would have already sounded so much better. You can do so much with that. I still left the room and go crazy. Can you do a dive bomb? I'm not tuned, but I can't tune my guitar because it's tuned right now because the intonation's a bit off. It's tuned to a certain way 
to the solo that I was recording. I don't want to mess that up, but... but... Yeah, going back to that clean sound, this is why it's so important to learn your scales all over the place instead of just one position. It's going to open up already. Just that is going to open up so much. Yeah, I'm like super out of tune. But... Beat it solo? I don't know. Spirit carries on. Um, the soul for spirit carries on? How's that go? Are we still, is this still working? Can you guys still hear me? Just got home from the Vice at Trieni show? No way, how was that? I'm jealous, they're not coming to Toronto on that tour. Was it just Steve Vai and Satch or was there anyone else? Also, what covers did they do? I would, I'm guessing they covered Hendrix or Deep Purple. That's my guess. What's your advice for someone? First of all, thank you for the five dollars, Freddie. What's your advice for someone who's okay guitar player to play like you? Um, I would say focus on. First of all, get your technique down, and there's a few things you gotta master. You gotta start with the pentatonic scales and learn all five positions. We were talking about that earlier. I don't know if you were there, but learn all five positions of the pentatonic scales. Then learn all seven modes, of, the major scale modes. Um, and learn how to improvise. Always focus on improvising using the pentatonic and the modes together. From there, you can start adding some chromaticism, which is really just kind of filling in the blanks, which I talked about earlier. Um, but one thing you can do is just like steal people's licks, just learn licks, all just short little licks from guitar players that you like. Um, if you like my stuff, just learn some of my licks. Like I play the same licks over and over again. If you watch enough of my clips, you'll see. You just start, you just steal, you know, some of my licks and you try and use that. Like learn one lick and try and use that everywhere over a backing track and see how it works if you move it to different positions, stuff like that. Understand how chords work and learn your chords. Um, understand what diatonic chords mean. Understand a little bit of theory. You don't have to go too deep into theory, but understand like the basic theory. Um, understand like diatonic theory and... Learn your arpeggios, which is just, you know, one, three, five, seven, all that type of stuff. One second. Um, yeah, learn your arpeggios and be able to understand, like, if you're playing over a backing track, just be able to hit the arpeggios over each track. We were talking about that earlier over this song that I was just jamming on and just hitting the one, the three, and the five. And then 
inserting your scales in between all that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But that's really what I'm doing, like when I'm soloing, a lot of it just has to do with hitting the chord tones and then improvising scales all around that. Thank you, Con. Appreciate that. Another thing you want to learn is scale sequences. That's how you connect certain licks and certain parts together. Put scale sequences, and scale sequence is just a pattern within a scale. So that's what I was doing here. Uh, I was going like. My pattern was. And then I kept moving that up. Lux plays. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks for the $10. Comfortably numb second solo. Is the second solo the one that goes... Um... Is that the second solo or is that the first solo? Second solo. Oh, 
Oh, right, okay, so that was the second solo what I was playing. So this is the first solo. The second solo is the one with the minor, right? I don't know it, but I'll try and learn it right now on the spot. Here we go. Getting it? Thank you so much for all the super chats thanks everyone for sticking around i gotta go eat my wife just called me food's ready um thanks for hanging out we talked about a lot of stuff but the one thing i got from this is uh yeah the first pentatonic scale is not melodic you can't play melodically if you just stick with that one scale so learn at least learn all five shapes if you're going to stick to pentatonic but more so than that Introduce that second note, which comes from the hexatonic scale, which is what I teach in my, um, thank you, Santa Maria, I appreciate that. Um, you know, introduce that extra note, which is what I teach in my hexatonic scale masterclass, uh, but it's really just a pentatonic with that one extra note, or take that a whole step further and just learn your chord tones, learn the one, three, and five, the arpeggios of each one of those chords, and try to target those within your pentatonic, and that's going to sound very melodic as well. But um, yeah, as you guys saw today, the first pentatonic shape, nah. This doesn't sound like you're, you're stuck. You're stuck if you, that's the only thing you're using. It's, it's great. It sounds good. I would say at least learn the fourth shape so you can have the first shape and the fourth shape. Actually, for many years, when I first started playing guitar, I only knew the first shape and the fourth shape of the pentatonic. I didn't know, even know there were more shapes. Nobody ever taught me those shapes. I thought it was just the first and the fourth. Um, maybe start with those. That's what I did. And then eventually figure out the rest. But thanks again for sticking around. Um, I got more videos coming soon. And I'll do more of these lives because they're pretty fun. And yeah, I've been thinking of doing like a, a monthly membership type of thing. Maybe like 10 or 20 bucks a month. And then there's like a private group. And you just get like full access to me and like we'll go live a few times during the week and just answer everyone's questions basically like lessons but like I don't want to do one-on-one -on -one lessons but I still want to teach somehow aside from courses because courses are very specific like I'm working on my phrasing course right now which is going to be pretty cool I'm very excited to uh, release that whenever I finish putting that together but like a membership type of thing where we can just kind of do something like this where it's just guitar players and we're all learning and I'm answering questions and I can teach whatever during that day, you know, it's not like a set course or anything. You're asking me about a certain phrasing trick or you're asking me about theory or you ask me about chords or melodies or how to write a solo or this and that. So I think that would be really, really cool. 
I've just been trying to figure out some like ways where um, I can get people more value, but also make it, you know, worth my time. And the cool thing about that is like with these memberships, I'm part of like certain memberships, you know, on marketing and stuff to learn how to sell courses online. And what I notice is when, when people go live, like when the instructor goes live, most people don't show up. It's so usually at a time, let's say maybe people are at work or people forget. I don't know. A lot of people don't show up. So you get that like sometimes that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the instructor, which is really cool. And I feel like as well with like, you know, if I were to do a monthly membership, maybe sometimes not everybody shows up to the live calls. So you might get like, you know, a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me for a whole hour, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, something to think about. Again, thanks for sticking around. Thank you to everyone that, um, what are this called? Super Chats? That was pretty cool. I forgot that you could do those on YouTube. And yeah, I'll do some more lives soon. I'll be back. Thanks for sticking around.